What is going on everyone? My name is Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the red color playing as Poseidon, almost losing a villager. His name is Revan. His opponent today in the blue color, currently going for some snazzy opening Loki theory here, chopping this wood tree, uh, this wood tree, chopping this tree down at the start of the game and actually going straight onto gold too. He's got his own little take on the early game here, which I quite like. I love it when people do some uh, stuff just that little bit different to me and uh, say, you know what? I like your idea, but it's not as good as mine so tag here now onto his uh onto his boar he's gonna have all of the wood he needs to have in order to get himself uh, a temple and a house and he's gonna have a great time however that's not all this is the competitive mega random tournament group stages every win matters Every loss matters as well, uh, to be fair, but definitely winning is more important than losing as, as most of the time you'd be able to work that one out. Uh, so what are we going to, what are we going to see here? I don't know. We've got a kind of a cool map, actually. If you're unaware, uh, Mega Random spawns in a fairly random way every single, uh, every single game. In a kind of weird way, every single game. So we get a little uh, a little forest line here to chop the map in half in a way uh, as the players are scouting around trying to see what uh, they can see here. We do have a, a very, very healthy amount of boar in the main base here. What was this? One, it's just a, an arctic wolf. So we've got one, two, three, four boars here, which is it, it's a very, very healthy amount. So we'll see how this game's going to progress after this as the scouting still uh, sort of trying to work out what's around the map here as Revan's moving his Katoskopos forward, looking for something something to see here. Uh, and we'll see how that's going to go. Uh, there, is a, there is a chance that there's no extra hunt here after this initial 1,200 uh, because the lowest limit is going to be 1,000 at this point. We might get changed in the future. Who knows? But this could be all of the hunt on the map. We are seeing cows getting drawn in here. And at this point, not finding any more hunt on the map is a little bit distressing for the Loki player. The Poseidon player is going to be uh, pretty happy with that in this matchup, knowing that he's... The, the Loki's going to have a little bit of an issue getting to the Heroic Age and a whole bunch of making all those hearse around and all, these other, all, all those other issues. As we do see the final dwarf coming through, we've got ourselves seven villages on the food, it's three villages, four villages on wood, an extra dwarf, and that's going to be a perfect advance here for Tark in the early stages of the game. Uh, for those of you who are unaware of these players, I'm not exactly sure who Tark is, but he's apparently a Loki player. Uh, and he's and he's playing on Vubly, trying to get better. Thus far, a very very solid opening. Very very happy uh, for Tark here. Uh, Revan, on the other hand, a uh, a trainee, some might say, of the great late Mister. No, he's not late. He's just playing Age of Empires four and beating everyone when he's got the time. Uh, when he's not like riding around his tractor in the farm. Uh, but Revan here is a he's a he's a fellow Greek brethren. And, uh, and a very, very strong Greek player. And we'll see what he's going to be able to do in this game. As the Katoskopos does spot these berry bushes over here. There are berry bushes over here as well. Uh, still, Revan hasn't scouted his back, uh, his back of, the, of his base just yet. And he does decide in this moment to make a Pegasus. I, I've been saying this is probably going to become standard on this map. Just to make sure you scout the entirety of the map to know exactly what you need to see. We're now starting to see Hersa moving forward. They might actually catch the centaur that is on its way forward here, but it seems like the Hersa have missed that one. The Theseus is going to be making its way forward as well. The boar just about to be wrapped up here as the Kotoska boss just misses that cow. Now the Hersa moving down to the bottom side of the map. We'll see the six berry bushes, but I don't think that uh, that Revan is going to be needing to go onto that. He's got plenty of cows uh, and the villagers jumping onto the wood as well here. We'll see what's uh, 
What's going to happen here is the troll is going to actually get caught out over here. This means the Hippolyta gets a free kill if Revan pays attention. Looks like he's not paying attention here as the uh, Hippolyta starts throwing those arrows, shooting those arrows. And the troll gets taken out. Relic will get grabbed here. Pair of Golden Lights, one of the uh, better early game relics that you can pick up. Going to help uh, a ton here as this uh, Hursa is really, really seeming like he's struggling to hold that relic. I've never noticed that. But he kind of just gets all hunched over that relic. He's like, whoa, it's so heavy. And he finds another relic over here, which is the Pygmalion statue. This is a really, really good relic here. Uh, S plus tier, in my opinion. 40% extra villager hit points can really break a lot of the raiding strategies people want to want to do. As now the Hippocon starting to move forward, looking for some raids here. As the Katoska boss attempting to retreat away from here, but... Let's get taken out. And Revan is now a little bit on the back foot. He's got the advantage here for the time being, but more units are swinging around the back here for Tark to get in on here, but not before one Herso gets taken out. As Hall of Thames is getting researched, a lot of the times people forget, especially, well, Loki players forget when they're researching Hall of Thames, they've actually invested 300 wood into a technology. So it is really, really important to allow that technology to finish before they start taking any fights because they're definitely going to be behind on either production or or well, anything, but basically put behind on production because they've decided to invest in a technology. Now Tark retreating back. He's got his uh, healing spring here, gonna get his units back up to full HP as Revan's gonna start trying to push in. There is this gold mine here that is a big, big threat. Oh, or a big, a big threat that, that Revan is noticed. He's like, yeah, if I get in here, I can take this, uh, this gold mine out and win this game really, really fast. He's already got the Pegasus on the bottom gold mine. The uh, Pegasus on the top gold mine is actually going double Pegasus here, role playing as Odin, if you will, which I really, really like. He hasn't quite got this gold mine under wraps just yet, but uh, Revan's going to be able to keep pushing in here and we'll see if he's going to be able to take out Tark or not. Tark's got eight Hursa at the moment uh, compared to the eight or six, six Hippocon hero. And, uh, or both heroes, I guess, as the Longhouse is now going to start getting taken down. Uh, we do have uh, the Eyes in the Forest getting grabbed here for Tark as well. I feel like this this um, upgrade might be a little bit of a bait. I think 50 gold seems like it's free, but really it's just taking up your, your Longhouse for... For 25 seconds instead of being producing units here as the longhouse is getting closer and closer to falling as the hippocon continue to move in here and start dealing damage tark is doing a nice job at trying to, f to defend this while sending his herso forward will he be able to get any picks is the big question revan with a lot of wood in the bank getting himself medium upgrades as well he will have to start thinking about farming as this is such a low hunt map didn't really talk about it, but it's a really, really low hunt map. So your farm transition has to be incredibly uh, precise here as the villager does get garrisoned into the town center. The Hurst are going to be retreating away and we'll see. Will there be any decent raids actually hit here from Tark as the, uh, the wall here or the gate, I should say, is down to one HP. Uh, it's actually, is it better to just delete this and then rebuild it? I think it is. Uh, but Tark just going to leave it at 1 HP. And Revan now has the ability to push in here and kick Tark off of this gold mine. So you see those Hursa wandering forward, being a little bit aggressive. Tark has a slight advantage here, 82 population, but he has just ran out of food. He's got no uh, berries left. His cows are out. We do see a nice fight happening here from Tark as Revan is pushing forward. Revan needs to get some myth unit spawns in this fight if he has any shot at winning here. The gold mine's just about to expire as well. This is absolute nightmare for Tark. He has not prepared the farm transition at all. Does he have plow? He does have plow. He's getting himself uh, he's getting himself watched. How is this late? Is a really, really bad uh, I don't want to say a bad decision, but a, a tough decision to make because his gold mine is just about to uh, to expire here. And what can he really do to what, what, that that extra three hundred resources could be very very helpful here. Let's just say that much. As now Tark is onto his wood over here, the farms are slowly starting to come up. The dwarves moving over onto this uh, tree over here. We see the Pegasus flying above on this gold mine as. Uh, Tark doesn't necessarily need to leave his base right away because he's got 
566 gold in the bank. But what he needs is farms, and he needs to get to full population Herzer so that he can somehow defend his second gold mine. Whereas Revan, on the other hand, actually, I take that all back. Revan also needs a very similar thing here. If he cu cuts all of his Hippocon and his Villager here, will he be able to get... If Does he have enough resources to get to the next stage? Not exactly, but he's pretty close. So it would be... Uh, a wise idea to to do that trying to get to the next age to get a pass pissed out as the hippocon now find that ox cart the hippocon all making their way down to that bottom location the ox cart going to be uh zooming away it is a rather quick when you're loki the the ox cart gets to move fairly quick at 4.35 speed the dwarves shanking away the hearse coming over here will spot that toxody the hippocon going to be swinging in here the other units of revan are very much out of position here which is going to allow tark to get onto this gold mine for a hot minute here as we see the hersa trying to get onto those units as the uh, toxody gets taken out and tark still holding strong here as the hippocon moving back in 103 population to 88 population as the fight has to start here tark has to take it but the army of revan is not all over here so it's a great fight here for revan uh sorry for tark here as the iron here are wandering forward and revan is on the back foot somehow some way he's turning around though he still has now he's got his entire army here he's looking like he wants to take this fight a little bit more seriously the farms are still starting to come up for tark as he's trying to deal with this one the hearths are going to be retreating up to the top side of the map here trying to allow the dwarves to retreat remember tark does have a whole bunch of gold in the bank he's no longer training those hearths though I'm not sure exactly why that is you see a falkyrie spawn here as the Einhiar does get taken out the golden lions getting taken out as well and tark has has to come back into his main base those dwarves can jump onto wood though and he can spam more farms and get those herser pumping uh tark could be fairly over committing it trying to get heroic age here against poseidon specifically or, or zeus who has access to hermes rushing that that heroic age is less important as we are seeing crenellations coming in which is actually an interesting idea from Tark, getting crenellations spamming some towers up over here to just defend against the onslaught of uh of cavalry could be a really really good idea so we see another longhouse coming down still not producing those units just yet the hippocon coming around onto this location Tark's got a lot of farms up he's got his ox carts here as well he could be putting these ox carts to make these farms just a little bit more a uh, little bit more efficient here but uh, not exactly happening just yet. And in this moment, Revan is taking the opportunity to actually get a second town center, which isn't all bad because it seems like he's just about to be able to click up. If the idea is to stick in the heroic age here and go very hard on the Hapaspis to make sure you get a gold star, I don't hate this idea in the slightest as Tark hits the town bell, but some of those villagers not making their way in onto the uh, onto the town center. He has to actually grab these villagers and click onto the ox cart to make that work as we are seeing some walls getting thrown up over here. Aphrodite coming down. Town center is up. A couple of golden lions looking for some raids over here. We are seeing the villagers are outside of their base now. And this is an opportunity for Loki to start getting some of those raids that he so desperately will be wanting to, to get here as the... Uh, as the medium hippocon have uh, kind of found this gold mine that's being walled in and now Revan's going to be sending everything over here. Do we see a whole bunch of barracks getting dropped? Yes, we do. Or military academies, I should say, which is going to mean hippaspists straight away, which actually means Tark needs to start thinking about making raiding cavalry here to deal with this. But he's going to be throwing up some watchtowers. He's, remember, he got that crenellation. So uh, one watchtower getting up with crenellations. Uh, dealing 8 damage, 16 damage with the 2 arrows, plus the 150%. You're looking at something in the vicinity of 30, uh, 32 damage per second to the medium hippocon, which is a huge amount of extra population, effective population to help defend against a push in onto this position. Uh, now, you can potentially drop curse down here on this position. I actually kind of might have liked to see a bronze push through here, going through Dionysus, but uh, Aphrodite, the, uh, the choice... Tark retreating back and to try and put up some more towers to make sure he can hold here. Would like to see a hill fort or something like that. But at this point, Tark kind of needs a mythic age. And he is throwing the market down. Question is, does he go for uh, Tyr or does he go for 
hell. Both very, very strong, very good ideas here. As we see, Heavy Hippocon has come through. The second Watchtower is up, though, and these uh, Heavy Hippocon fighting underneath Crenellation Towers. This has been a really, really good idea from... Uh, from Tark to get these towers up, so he should be able to hold here. Thanks so much for the 19 months, True Drew PS. Appreciate you, my friend. But it seems like with half of those Herso not being in the fight, not really training the Herso, trying too hard to get to the next age, we do see a Flaming Weapons getting dropped here uh, for, from Tark, which is Revan will be wanting to cease fire here, I would assume, as his army is getting absolutely torn up by just a handful of those Herso. And here is value of which... Tark has managed to gain as Tark very nicely defends this one here. Double tower, handful of Hursa, uses the flaming weapons to bait or to use to basically use the ceasefire of his opponent. And then he will be heading to the Mythic Age here. Which god is he going? He is going through hell. This is really, really good for Tark. A lot of the times we talk about Loki needing his um needing his mythic is is basically needing his flaming weapons to get some value to win games and here tark's flaming weapons should have been ceased fired immediately so tark did get a little bit of value but not a lot but the point here is that tark's got an economy here a very strong economy he's going to be mythic age he's going to have fire giant he's going to have a nidhogg which is with a 4 hp hippolyta is going to do absolute work all the gold mines are exposed and if tark can put some real pressure onto revan revan's going to have a difficult time here however he is on a bit of a timing uh, if you ask me, as those are pacifists, <coughs> are going to be coming out and things might be looking just a little bit uh, difficult here indeed as the hill fort does come up for Tark. On this position, looks like potentially Yal are an option here for Tark as well, though he doesn't have Njord, so he doesn't have the Ring Giver, but still, Yal a good option nonetheless. Starting to see some more units flowing through the Atlanta coming in, but uh, at this point, uh, Tark has not spent much of his favor at all. He's going to be getting himself Fire Giant immediately here. The problem really for Tark is, how can he get a second town center as he decides to start pushing out? The Nidhogg gets dropped in and Revan has to retreat back here. Tark is uh, playing out of his mind in this game here. As the uh, as the Hippocon retreating, unfortunately, Revan now accidentally focusing down at her. So when there's a fire giant right next to him uh, and Tark has to make sure he keeps these fire giants alive because they're very, very important. He's not actually training any more of them at this point. Uh, right now, Tark can take his time, actually get second town centers uh, and and start really taking this game into more of a, a late game sort of situation, which we're not really used to, uh, because normally the Poseidon would be fine here, but with the Nidhogg coming in onto this gold mine, starting to deal the splash damage, these villages are gonna go down very, very quickly as Revan is retreating away, coming back into his base, only loses two or three villages to that raid, but he has been cut off gold for a little bit here. The Hippolyta is in though, so look at this damage that the Hippolyta does to the Nidhogg. It's not really all too much, doing about 40 damage a shot. So you do have to be uh, fairly mindful of that as the town center will end up coming up here as the heavy Hippocon wandering through will get greeted by these effectively champion Hippocon. The fire giant getting a ton of damage done. Unfortunately, the building block not quite fast enough there for Tark as Revan has to retreat uh, away. He loses a lot of units here, throwing those away. And Tark is in an absolute commanding position. Tark can at this point almost go for a Titan Age, which would be a very weird sight, but he could go for it. Probably a mistake because of a potential Artemis that could come through for Revan. But Revan now moving on to this back gold mine, going to be throwing down the fortress as well to help him defend against uh, potential Nidhogg raids. Very smart to be doing that one as the Hursa are going to be uh, flowing through here trying to take down the military academy. We see the fire giant wandering through as well gonna help out the mountain giant in the back these hursa are absolute tanks would love to see some armory upgrades of some sort in the uh, realm of simply just 
copper mail for both players would be a really, really big upgrade here, but not happening here as the Polita does actually manage to basically take down that fire giant, which is a big win there for uh, for Revan as his Hippocon seemingly have managed to deal with the majority of these Hursa as the Hursa have to retreat back. Tark's got a lot of resources in the bank, but in true Loki fashion, really does not have that much production up just yet. Throwing up another hill fort in order to start making those shells. He's also getting Ballister with the idea of potentially getting into Fire Giant Ballister here as Revan wandering forward. We see Copper Mail coming through finally for Tark. So that's going to be a, a big help against these melee units. As the Hursa wander through here, going to start getting some good damage there onto the Hippocon. We see the Hiltford is up. More Longhouse going to be coming down. Would love to see a third Town Center getting grabbed by... Uh, by Tark at any point in the in the near future here. We've even got villages over on this gold mine here. Both players relatively uh, happily mining at this point, except for the Nidhogg who's pushed off a handful of villages here as Revan has to make a break for it through this location. But Revan has kind of quelled the beast that is Loki here in this point. He's going to be able to click up. Going through Hephaestus would be a great idea here, getting himself that extra bit of economy. Uh, in order to be fine, but he is deciding Artemis is the way. I don't see a whole lot of uh, utility to Artemis here. The earthquake going to kill off a, a town center, maybe. If he can make a big push behind it, oftentimes Norse can struggle with that, but given the fire giants and everything, I feel like you need the extra help getting those armory upgrades through. Uh, but as we see, the uh, the fire giants coming in, smashing down those Hippocon as if they have no HP, doing tons of damage. We see the Atlanta coming through, going to try and swing onto that, uh, onto those fire giants yet again. But while this is happening, you see the, uh, the Apollos just get absolutely smoked there as curse gets dropped and the fire giants clean up the majority of those units here and even with atlanta he's still not able to take down those fire giants you see some uh villages over here dealing with an ulf Yarl. he does manage to pick it off but not before losing two villages there villager difference is tark is at 66 and revan is at 54 as that copper mail is now coming through for Revan as well. The Nidhogg going to fly through again. Still alive, still causing a nuisance here. And those uh, militia getting taken down. We'll see the Ballister wandering through here. As now we've got the, uh, the trademark kind of box setting up here from Tark. I love this ability for the Tark is showing to kind of take the map here as we see the heavy Hippocon getting taken down and I think that's Mythic Age for Revan as well. Question is where to cast the the um where to cast that that earthquake really as the villagers trying to come through. They're not gonna quite make it to this town center in time it would seem as the villagers just get there and the town center just gets up meanwhile Ursa trying to grab this town center over here but the Nidhogg flying overhead is going to put a stop to the Hippocon putting a stop to the town center if that made any sense at all as these Hippocon uh, kind of toast in uh, the real term of it those all kind of getting absolutely smoked here I, I, I can't stop I, it's too many too many puns too much too much stuff here. We see some side builds coming through for Revan. Love that. Trying to put some pressure onto this location up here to get himself that extra town center. Uh, you have to remember that a lot of the advantage in the score right now is myth units and kill loss. Economically, Revan is also behind. So it kind of is all piling into a big mess of Loki, uh, Loki favored right now. So we'll see, will Tark be able to get this uh, town center up anytime soon or not? As over here, we see some uh, Hippocon trying to pick off a fire giant on the back here. The Chimera coming forward to try and finish off these fire giant. The fire giant very much out of position here as Atlanta does manage to take down one of them. And going after the next one is going to be a really, really big help. Meanwhile, we've got some Hippocon raiding Tark's main base here as Revan is trying to mine this gold mine. But the Ursa do spot this one. We see the big earthquake here going to take down the towns and to take down a couple of ox carts as well and cause some issues in Tark's main base giving uh Revan just a little bit of help here in this game we see the uh Atlanta still trying to take down this uh fire giant with the Polyphemus over here as well who can help out a ton as well uh Nidhogg still alive here Nidhogg is such a huge at, um addition to the Norse army against
against Greek because of only one uh, range hero. Now you can get yourself out Heliopoli as well to deal with the Nidhogg, but the Nidhogg is one of those few units that actually has 99% crush armor. One of those few myth units. Most myth units do not have 99% crush armor. So the, so the Heliopolis is only going to really be doing pierce damage. The bonus being that the Nidhogg takes a hot minute to actually... Does he? No, I think maybe that's a terrible idea. Maybe don't build Heliopolis. So we see the, uh, the units coming over here to deal with the uh, Hursa and the settlement is going to get uh, dealt with as well. Meanwhile, we see the Chimera coming through, going to hit those uh, hit those cheeky old sarks, trying to prevent the town center from coming back up. Over here, we've got Hillfort preventing this gold mine from getting mined. This gold mine just about to expire over here. Flood control coming through for Tark as well here. As the units trying to push through as best as they can. Uh, town center is getting awfully close to going up. Revan, you got him. You got to micro this just a little bit here. As the uh, as the town center here can get denied, as he does get onto that Olvsark just in time there. 300, uh, 3083 HP, and then the uh, Chimera can start preventing uh, the town center from getting up even longer here, making life very very tough here for. Uh, for Tark as well as you see the Polyphemus coming through saying g'day fire giant I'm gonna bash you away chase you down and then bash you some more as the uh, Polyphemus is actually such a strong unit here meanwhile over here random Herso getting picked off as Tark is being disallowed to really do anything he wants to in this point as we do see the settlement gets kind of Left to its own devices here. All Tark has to do is right click on it and he will get back up to his 160 population. His villager production on the food. Gonna get uh, possibly possibly fixed up. If I was Tark, just buy some food here from the market. Live the dream. He's making ox caravans as well. Moving his way into the middle uh, stages of the game here as the mountain giant gets bashed away. See the polar to falling. Yet again, where is that Nidhogg? It is flying over this gold mine. So we do see the villagers making their way over onto this gold mine in the top side of the map. The Revan villagers coming over here onto the gold mine here as well. Going to be able to actually shank the hill fort down, which doesn't have uh, doesn't have boiling oil. So it's going to be a free kill here for uh, for Revan. But we'll see if uh, if Tark is going to notice that one in time or not. Uh, to come over here and de deny it. Not only deny, but also deny extra buildings getting thrown up. But at this point, Revan's got to be asking himself, man, I, why didn't I go Hephaestus? Have the plenty of alt, live the dream. Uh, Tark taking his time here to can't quite work out how to finish this game as Revan's actually got a half decent army in terms of the champion cavalry. It's just that his villager production is just not that great. He's only building from two town centers. Needs to get up to that 30 or oh sorry 80 villager uh, population and he is consistently losing villagers here in this game as the Hursa chasing them down through this wall uh Tark might be it might be uh, worth it for Tark to try and destroy this wall and prevent uh the villagers from having a, somewhat of an escape route to get a little bit more damage done here meanwhile we see the army of Revan trying to push through here as the Polita going after the fire giants here just a little bit and retreat a touch away as the Atlanta and Theseus are gonna come in here to try and finish off said fire giant. Drama's going to town on everything else here as well. Very, very nice composition from Revan. He's actually up to 140 population. We see Swineray actually getting researched by Tark with the idea of potentially making some Ulf suck. Now, had Tark gone through uh tier here, he would have had access to Berserker Gang, if you get Berserker Gang, Swine Array, Call of Valhalla, your Ulf Sark are disgusting. It's not what he went for, which means going in with Swine Array, not as good. Much better to just stick with the uh, the Fire Giant, Hursa kind of combo, building temples everywhere, getting Rampage, starting to bit, uh, get those, um, those Fire Giants or, or Mountain Giants or Frost Giants just spawning all over the map. That's kind of the play style of... Uh, of hell here as we do see a wall coming up over here tower as well getting shot up as the uh 
Villagers just hanging out on this position here as Revan's going to try and take them down. Little does Revan know, sniping these villagers at this point is actually going to be helping Tark because he is way over villager, way over econ economized here, up to 105, 110. We do see the uh, old sarks getting swapped there as Swine Array has come in. These old sarks, even though they've got no medium upgrades, are actually doing decent damage here against the, uh, the champion Hippocon. Uh, and Revan not really sure why that's happening here as he looks at those off and like they only do 9.9 .9 damage wrong they are doing uh, 18 damage to the champion Hippocon just turns out they've got no HP remaining um, as the units swing around the bottom here and we'll see what Tark can do to uh, to finish this game off as the Nidhogg here picking off more and more villages where is that Hippolyta, you gotta get that Hippolyta over here and simply just leave it on a gold mine at this point. Gold is so important for Revan. The big problem for Revan, the, I mean, there's multiple problems for Revan here, but the big one is he hasn't started a trade route. If he starts a trade route, he doesn't have to worry so much about it all. And he should be okay, but we're seeing some of those uh, those Heliopoli coming over here. And uh, like I was saying, probably not Heliopoli against the Nidhogg is the uh, is the option because that Nidhogg actually goes to town on uh, on the on the Heliopoli as the Nidhogg getting pulled away here. 255 HP remaining. So you see some towers getting thrown up by Tark as he wants to get some good positioning on this location to take down the town center. The Nidhogg still going to town on these Hippocon here as it does finally end up falling here as Revan has dealt with that Mythic Age beast uh, and has been able to push Tark back for the time being as he tried to get a tower up there but not quite able to make it work. Now, lots of idle military units all over the map. We are seeing Revan going to attempt to come over here, throw a fortress up, get in onto Tark's main base. See if he's going to be able to do it. There is a stray her hearser over here. I'd love to see some temples getting thrown up by Tark. This is one of those things which makes the uh, the Norse late game significantly harder to play than, say, an Egyptian late game. But, man, it's strong when you do it right. If you can just throw buildings up, stray one... one um, one unit running into a corner of a map, building a, a bunch of buildings can be such an annoying thing to deal with. As now we're seeing Revan slow pushing here. He's got his uh, his Heliop, or should I say Blitzkrieg? One of the two. He's going straight in for the uh, the hill fort here with his Heliop lie. Uh, still a whole bunch of idle units here for Tark. Kind of not paying attention as Revan is trying to push through and make some mount, some uh, what of a comeback here as the villagers coming through here for Tark. Going to be able to convert those into Ulf Sarks if he so chooses. The Ulf Sarks not quite able to, or the villagers not quite able to stop the hill fort from falling here as Revan still not even able to mount himself up to fortified town centers as he's down over 1300 score but completely equal in this game as we see these villagers jumping onto the berry bushes here iron weapons iron shields coming through for tark nearly full bronze uh, he's got full bronze effectively against what a uh, loki player can do but he's he doesn't have the full iron and the iron is going to be a real big help for for Tark here as he can also think about getting himself champion infantry as the villagers wandering forward to try and take these Heliopolis down as more buildings coming in onto this position here as some of those uh Hapaspis trying to take down the the gold mining uh villagers on that location here as the as the polyphem is coming back in to keep trying to take out those myth units more Ulfsark getting trained here for some reason the Ulfsark well not for some reason I mean they're just not champion but the Ulfsark not quite enough to defend here as Revan is slowly getting through uh this position We'll see if we can get onto this town center anytime soon. And we do see walls up, towers up over here. Uh, we, we talked about this once already, but Revan has not started a trade route yet. He's got no gold remaining. There is this gold mine over here, but it is walled in. The uh, Ulfsark have come up to uh, champion now as the uh, Heliopoli trying to push through. Revan's got 646 gold left in the bank. Those uh, champion, uh, champion Ulfsark carving through Hippocon. Not only that, he also got Mythic Breastplate uh, to boot. So these are some incredibly beefy Ulfsarks. But the town center is going down so absurdly fast. 
And if Raven can keep the pressure up, keep the town center down, he's going to be in a good position here. Alex got tons of resources in the bank, though. And that's the big problem. Is, do we see a market anywhere? There is a slight trade route that has been started. Where is the market? I've got no idea. He's trading to this tra town center. Oh, it's right here. So right in the middle of the map. Just a little bit of trade. Townsend are getting thrown back up. Raven's still 144 of 145. Population is still up there, but it's only five population uh, behind uh, or in front of Tark here. So advantage is still going to be going to be Tark, uh, going to be uh, going to be Tark really, because he's got the economy to boot. The village is getting picked off as well. Another problem. I, I, I say it once. I will say it again. This is helping Tark here because he's got too many villages. As we see the settlement coming up slowly, but the Hippocon have managed to come in here, deny it, <coughs> deny it for the time being here. I'm still surprised to see Revan still going in with these, uh, these Hippocon against uh, essentially full infantry. We are seeing some Hippaspas coming through for Revan as well. They swing around, going to take these out. We do have those Chimera that were somewhere. Were they both taken out? Looks like they were both cleans there. As Revan has to retreat back yet again. Now, even if Tark gets this town center up, it's not the end of uh, the world here for Revan. He needs to get this uh, this market really going, though. As we see Secrets of the Titans. Tark is literally trolling right now. He is getting himself Secrets of the Titans. There is a way in which you can kind of convert... Um, like 10 or 15 uh, villages into Ulfsark, push your, uh, push your population up to like 175 of 160 and build that Titan gate while defending on the front. Uh, but it is, a, it is a tough one to get a Titan up for sure as Revan is continuously denying this town center. He's doing a very, very nice job. He sees his win condition and he is playing to it very, very nicely here. And I bet you, if Revan saw the resources that Tark uh, has here, he would say, man, I wish I had that wood right now. So he would spam the shit out of his buildings all around this location here, if he so could, uh, if he could do that. Do you see seven, uh, seven donkey caravans through here? And I think one of the problems here for potentially, no, he knows this is here. Uh, Maybe he doesn't know it's here. I think this is one of the problems here for Revan. He never scouted his back, the back of his base, not realizing there's a gold mine here, uh, and he hasn't checked it out. If he saw it there, he has a he has a fortress over here. He could build a Heliopolis, send this over, deal with this, send his villages in there, have some gold, live the dream where that's concerned. More old sarks flowing in onto this position now as Revan's units are dropping. 131 of 145 population as the town center is now going to shoot back up as all of the villages, or old sarks I should say, going to get that one up. And Tark now can start thinking about getting himself that Titan gate. As we see it dropped, and will we see the mass uh, conversion of villages here as we see a whole bunch of old sucks coming in. That's exactly what Tark is doing. However, he's done it a little bit early. You want to be 160 population first and then convert the old sucks is the, uh, the general idea here. As now Tark going to be throwing up double hill forts on this front. And what can... Uh, what can Revan really do here? He's he's making a pass fist, gonna send that forward. If he sends some Chimera forward, he can try and take out these Ulfsark that are getting the, the Titan Gate up. Meanwhile, we do see the uh, the units have pushed forward, getting the gold mine back for Revan. He can throw up his uh, throw up his market anytime soon. We see the pass fist spots this one as it is shooting up relatively quickly. The units moving forward here for Tark, not quite able to do all too much as, as the hill forts are all getting dropped, temple getting dropped as well. And the big question here is going to be, can Revan stop the Titan Gate? And, and I guess the next question behind that is, does he even really need to stop it? Because you get, we do know that Norse is fair, not Norse, Greek is fairly decent at dealing with a Titan. You just get all four heroes, get some Heliopoli, you chase the Titan around and see how you're going to go. As the uh, as the Hippocon making their way through here, going to start taking some of these Ulfsark down. Now, the Ulfsark can just turn around and kill these uh, Hippocon uh, quick smart. So we'll see if Tark's going to just do that or not as his, as his Titan Gate is going up. Very... Uh, very fast, just a handful of Ulfsark getting 
getting converted there or getting t taken off there. This one, one champion Hippogon is uh, against the world here. It actually does quite a bit of damage to this, but the Titan Gate is still going up. So we see some more Hippaspist wandering through the champion Hippogon. Going to come in, try and deny this just a little bit here. As Raven's not 100% sure what he should be doing here. The hill forts are up. Taking this location down is going to be a real big pain. He's got a Chimera queued up, which we would really love to use here. These Ulfsark are so absurdly strong. And there's the extra conversion there of Ulfsark onto this position. You see the villagers starting again. Tark is playing this game out of his mind. Now, if I told you that Tark... Actually, no. You guys tell me what rating you think Tark is at the end of this game. Leave it in the comments. Let me know what rating you think Tark is, because he is playing like like a seasoned veteran in a tournament in a lot of ways here. Uh, as the Ulfsark getting pulled away, Titan Gate slowly coming up. We see the units pushing through here. There is a Polyphemus here. Um, wandering through, that's going to be able to take these hill forts out. We've also got uh, the Burning Pitch, not Burning Pitch, bo bo Boiling Oil technology here that's going to be able to help defend this one. And as the Ulfsark flood through here, push the... Uh, push the, the the champion Hippocons away. Evan's got to think, what can he do? We're seeing Rampage come through. Call of Valhalla as well. Going to push those Ulfsark up to even more HP here. As stray units are still making their way in. We're still leaving like 11 Ulfsark on the Titan Gate here as the resources are still flowing up here. The uh, Ballast are coming through, hitting that location there. How's the trade route looking? 16 Donkey Caravan still with a very, very bad trade route here at only 35 gold. Very, very inefficient trade route. Only 35 gold here. Now we see Tark trying to push forward, taking down the archery range here as well. Still going after this Titan Gate. Do we see a Titan? There is a Titan Gate coming for Revan. And Revan, 41 minutes into the game, no fortified town centers. This He definitely can afford it now. He could have afforded it at some point, but I'm not sure if at this point he's just forgotten about it. Uh, and this is a really big problem for him because he just doesn't have the resources to get everything he needs to do. Does he have full iron yet? No, he's got full bronze. Unless the uh, Titan is... 78% or 77% of the way there. And I'm still trying to hold here as the Fire Giants slow pushing through this uh, this location here. Stray uh, Fortress going to make some uh, stuff. Got a random champion, a Tyroi, trying to push in onto this location. The Heliopolis is not going to be enough as it gets cleaned before it even... Kind of does too much damage. 88% here, getting up to 90%. Uh, the thing is, though, that Revan's got a lot of villagers on this Titan Gate. And will the opposing Titan be able to get here in time? Chances are the answer is no. And Tark still has to work out, well, how do I actually kill the Poseidon? He's in a winning position by every stretch of the word. 3,000 food in the bank, 9,000 wood in the bank, 1,000 gold in the bank. His opponent's got nothing in the bank. But he's just not able to make that push work. He needs to throw some buildings down and start constricting his opponent. As there's the Titan and a very rare Norse Titan in a competitive tournament here, ladies and gentlemen. We don't see this very often. Very, very big boy. He's, uh, he's, he's been eating a lot of Greek soldiers and uh, Egyptian soldiers and Atlantean soldiers through his days. And he's, he's gotten glutinous, a little bit fat around the edges. But he's, uh, he's here to swing his broad arms and, and destroy what his opponent's got. But Revan's Titan Gate is on its way. 60% of the way through here. As we'll see if he's going to get there in time or not. The walls get broken down. The Ulsark pushing through with the Titan. Tark is dead set on getting to this location as fast as he humanly can here. Uh, where are the rest of the units here for Revan is the big question. Revan's finally gotten himself fortified town centers as the army coming through here going to try and block 
the Titan, but the, will it will it matter? The big problem is going to be Champion Ulfsark getting onto the Titan Gate to slow this one down as we see the uh, Titan getting blocked here, but the units are here causing some issues. The Titan's going to take down the Town Center, and we see a Sync Error. You hate to see it. You hate to see it, ladies and gentlemen. We see a sync error of all the errors to see. We're going to jump back into the next game as fast as we possibly can. Oh, that's so disappointing. It wouldn't be an Age of Mythology tournament without sync errors, would it? Would it? Because here's the thing, look at the Titan is 1000 HP away from coming up. This Titan is getting pounded. Like, yeah, the town center is going to go yes. down, but this Titan's going to have a, a little bit of life left in it. We we'll see the game continuing here. All right, fuck it. It's over. <clears> hmm. <throat> it's frustrating, but then be the breaks. First game, we have to kind of work out what's going to happen. We'll let you know. A little bit in a second here. I have to have a think. <laughs> 